This series on Ghost of Christmas Past, I didn't know it would have quite the impact that it has made. But the last two weekends have made a great impact on many people. As we learned how to deal with, when I say ghost situations, the demon spirits that accompany what it is to live an offended life and how to overcome offenses. And last week we discovered how scripturally and by the help of the Holy Spirit we could overcome shame in life. And God is, with laser precision, has spoken some things to us to really help us. And I had a plan to uh, go a different direction that I had initially believed I would go today. But in the last 24 hours, I've had a shift on the inside. And so today I'm going a different direction by I know what is the direction of the Holy Spirit. And rather than the direction I was going to go, I was going to talk about labels. But I have spent some time in, in other series dealing with identities that people try to lay on you. And besides, when God nudges your heart, so what do you do? If you've got any sense, you go with the nudge of God. Amen? How many of you want the nod of God in your life? Then you've got to respond to the nudges of God in your life. Smile at someone and say, I hope you heard that. And so today I want to talk about the ghost of Christmas present and future, which is the Holy Ghost. The King James calls him Holy Ghost. That is not a weird word. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit makes some of you modern thinkers a little more comfortable. Uh, I think I'm, I'm probably using humor, but the truth is, um, due to different words, people being scripturally un um, disconnected, not having an understanding of the Word of God. They hear something like ghost and they automatically think evil. But the Holy Ghost is not evil. And in John chapter 1, go there with me. John chapter 1. I want to read some verses to you, then I'm going to read some from Luke chapter 1. How many of you believe the house of God ought to be a place where we can read the Word of God? Amen? John chapter 1, verse 32. And John bare witness, or bore witness, the New King James. I saw the Spirit de descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. And did not know him, but he who, I did not, excuse me, I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, that is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Then Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. How long? And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man, or have not known a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible." Then Mary said, Behold thy maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. 
and the angel departed from her. The ghost of Christmas present and Christmas future. It is so important that I make this clear today. That the greatest gift Jesus will ever bring to any life is not the healing of your body. It's not a natural opportunity in this life that may be good. And he does those kinds of things because he's such a good God. But the greatest gift of all is the gift of the new birth. For Jesus Christ, who is the only one who was able to pay the full price for the penalty of your sin, my sin, sins past, present, and future, has made a way through the gift of his life to the earth and through his life fulfilled, walking through everything he was supposed to, and by dying on a cross and by spending a certain amount of days on this earth reaffirming disciples and taking care of some other kingdom matters, and then ascending back to the Father and sit, sitting down at the Father's right hand. Jesus paid the price by His life, His ministry, His death, His burial, His resurrection, His ascension for everyone who calls on His name to be saved. Do I have anybody in this room that knows that you know that you know that you're a born-again child of God? If you know that, give him a hand clap. And if you don't know, I'm so glad you're here because this is a step you can't afford to miss. You are not saved because your grandmother is a legitimate Christian. You are not saved because you're in this building today. You will not be born again by accident, and you are not going to a place called heaven if you reject Jesus Christ. But what you can do today is get rejection out of your thinking. Get putting your future off out of your thinking. Get the devil out of your thinking. <laughs> I thought about saying something else, but this is Christmas. I'm going to be sweet. Get those things out of your head that are less than. And look unto Jesus and don't think about all the things about your life that need to change before you come to him. He was dealing with you before you even thought about making changes in your life. Give your heart to him and he'll help you bring on the changes that need to happen in your life. Quit worrying about the changes and get the big change. Today's the day to get born again. How many of you are grateful for the greatest gift Jesus ever gave to lost and dying mankind? Give him a praise in this room. Come on now, stir your Yourself up. This ain't sit and stare for two hours stuff today. Lost friend, I expect you to act lost, but Christians, I expect you to act on fire. Amen. This is Christmas time. This is what it's all about. This ain't about all the gifts you're going to get, and some of them you'll have to take back because they ain't going to fit. This is about something more than that. This is about your eternal future. This is not only about you living forever, but it's about you having some hope and some joy and some peace and some life while you're here. I'm glad I'm going to heaven, but I'm also glad I got some heaven on earth because of Jesus Christ. Not because of sin, not because of my old life. You got one of those crazy preachers that doesn't magnify his old life like I miss it. I don't miss what I used to be. I'm grateful that I'm not what I used to be. Don't you love to hear somebody testify? It's more exciting about what God has done than what they think they missed out on that they left that they really kind of wanted to hang on to. I would say to you, you probably still need to get saved. I said, I would say to you, you probably still need to get saved. Rewind. I would say to you, you probably still need to get saved because when you experience Jesus Christ, I, can't, I cannot make you the promise that everything outside of Christ is going to be everything you wish it would be. But I can make you this promise that everything that Christ brings you into will fulfill your life, will satisfy your life, bring hope to your life, and not just your now, but every person who impacts the miracle that He has done in your life. I think I need to preach right there. I'm kind of tired of North Americans acting like being born again ain't no big deal. <laughs> you, were, you were lost. Some of you were alcoholics. 
Some of you were obnoxious. Some of you were broke, busted, and disgusted. Some of you like the snake. You didn't have a pit to hiss in. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching better than you're letting on. Some of you were chronically depressed. Some of you were mean as a rattlesnake. But Jesus came into your life. Woo! Hallelujah to the Lamb. And no matter who was against you, and no matter who wrote you off, Jesus said, I'm going to ride them in. Hallelujah. The greatest gift Jesus ever gave to a lost, dying person. And if you're in this place today, listen to me. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I didn't ask you if you were Baptist or Pentecostal or non-denominational or Church of Christ or Catholic. I ask you, do you know that you know that you know. Not because what somebody convinced you that you're still uncertain of, but do you know in here that you belong to Christ? Because if you don't, we can take care of that today. And I plead with you that you do that today. Because there's a lot of people who wish they had another chance that may never have another chance. There are people in eternity that wish they could have a do-over, that while they were on this earth, they never came to Christ, and they are eternally separated from God, and they are in a place where they should never have been, and they are living in, a, in an agony and a heartache and a separation and a torment that should have never been for them. But they procrastinated away their days and missed the greatest miracle. I'm going to get saved on my own terms. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I'm sorry, but it doesn't work that way. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah, but, but it's not just about calling on the name of the Lord because you decided today's the day. It's about responding to the pull of the Holy Spirit and calling on the name of the Lord, not like, uh, I'll choose you when I get ready, but you realize the opportunity is divine. It's supernatural. In the natural, you shouldn't have even had a right but by the love of God, not only do you have a right, you've got a place. You've got a place by Him. You've got a place in Him. You've got a hope in Him. And I know I sound like in this hour kind of a different beat to a different drum. But this gospel is still true. And we, we, we've made it seem like you can just sort of get saved any old loose way. And I'm not trying to make it hard because Jesus didn't make it hard. But if you really are born again, you know it. A miracle's happened in your life, and you are changing by the glory of God, and you like it. Amen. Shout amen. amen. But then there's another gift. This gift is for every believer, every born again child of God. There is no more necessary gift than what I'm about to talk to you about for a very few moments. For the believer, every born-again believer needs the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Listen to John chapter 1 again. John chapter 1. Hallelujah. Don't you love it when you change your spot? But I know where John chapter 1's at. Praise God. I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained upon him. This is John baptizing Jesus. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. This is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit settling on Jesus. This is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say this is he who was baptized in the Holy Spirit, and he's the only one who will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, but his people will not need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's not what it says. It says this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Isn't this awesome? That at Jesus' water baptism, fulfilling all righteousness, because Jesus didn't go down in the water a sinner and back up a saint. Jesus fulfilled righteousness and charted the course for us and showed us the necessities of obedience and the blessing of it. And <laughs> perfect sinless nature went down in the water, came up, back up out of the water, the only one ever baptized that didn't need to be in and of himself. Ooh, 
But he knew if I'm going to tell my people to do it, I must first do it. I want to say this about Jesus. He will never ask you to do anything. He will never instruct you to do anything. He will never challenge you to do anything that is not something he has not already done, willing to do, wanting to do, and wanting you to realize there are benefits in doing what he says. The Holy Spirit comes on Jesus in the form of a dove. And, and he tells John the Baptist, this is the one who's going to baptize people with the Holy Spirit. Matthew's Gospel said, John said, there's one coming after me who's mightier than I. His shoe latches I'm not worthy to unloose. And when he comes, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The baptism in the Holy Spirit should not be avoided because you have a Baptist background. Should not be avoided because you have a Catholic background. Should not be avoided because you have a Pentecostal background. You saw some crazy things, and so, you know, maybe some things... But well, they, You know what? You might have saw some crazy things, and I, you know, might have even really been crazy. But you probably were crazy yourself when you were sawing the things that you saw. In a different kind of a way. We're so good at pointing out what's crazy about other things, aren't we? The baptism in the Holy Spirit is for the... Forget denomination a moment. Forget non-denomination. Transcends Catholicism. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is the most necessary gift for the born-again child of God. Because it is the baptism of the Holy Spirit that will open your heart to realize God did not intend for you to only use your gifts and your intellect and human reasoning and human effort. He's got an anointing. He's got power. He's got wisdom. He's got guidance. He's got direction that every one of us desperately need. And some of you are very quiet. But if you're honest with yourself, you ought to be thinking this is good news because some of you are smart as all get out. But you are failing miserably in areas because you need the help of the Holy Spirit and you've been doing it without Him. Some of you have been doing it without Him because you didn't know. And some of you have been doing it without Him because you're disobedient. <laughs> well, whichever way we can fix it today. The baptism in the Holy Ghost. I know what different people say. I know what different denominations teach. I know what the denomination that I came up and taught. But I'm telling you right now, the Bible is not a denomination. And I'm not anti-denomination, by the way, because I have some wonderful friends that are very godly in denominational churches. But the baptism in the Holy Ghost is not the doctrine of just mainline charismatics and Pentecostal churches. The baptism in the Holy Ghost is something that Jesus Christ came to bring to people who have believed on Him that we might accomplish what we're supposed to accomplish on the earth. Give Him a praise in this room. Some of you, you'll have to... If you're new, well, he's, he's rough on those people. This is the best news in the world. This ain't that crap we see on television news that makes us want to scream. This is not the confusion of politics, that politicians that don't know God, some do, thank God for that, but those who don't know God prove to us they don't know what in the world they're doing. No, this is about celebrating a king. This is about celebrating a lord. This is about celebrating somebody who doesn't just want to give us life and just leave us here to make it and just struggle through. He wants to baptize us with the Holy Spirit so that we can walk in the same kind of power and enablement that he walked with in the earth in your Bible right there listen to this a lot of hindrances to people not receiving this gift of this wonderful ghost Holy Ghost Holy Spirit of Christmas present and Christmas future and not just Christmas future but future because I'm telling you in the Holy Spirit there's a future for you and I'm also going to tell you this if you deny the help of the Holy Spirit in your life you may get your Christian butt kicked well, I'm a child of God I, I'm, I know I'm saved 
But this is some of this is just a little extreme for me. Okay. Then all you can do is fight an arm of the flesh. And all you can do is make it happen yourself. I'm not fussing at you. I'm just getting up in your ground. The baptism in the Holy Spirit. If you're old, if you're young. If you're cool, if you're a nerd. If you're brown, if you're white, if you're black, if you're red, if you're yellow, if you're freckled. If you're rich, if you're poor. If you come to Christ, and you know, when you come to Christ, if you will listen to Jesus, He will lead you on to the Holy Spirit. The only people who are not being baptized in the Holy Spirit are people who stay in atmospheres where this does not get taught, where this gets avoided, and where people stay in atmospheres where they can live in a lukewarm state, just kind of meld into the coma. It's the kind of just, uh, you know, we're all just good Christians. We're very unfaithful. We're very uncommitted. We're, <laughs> we're very sporadic. We're very wishy-washy. But we're good Christians. Well, there's a lot better than that, and that's good news. There are hindrances that stop people from receiving this baptism in the Holy Spirit, this wonderful ghost of Christmas present in our future. Ignorance is one. Ignorance of what God says in His Word about it. I could take you on a journey. I don't have time today. But if you will let the Word of God speak to you, without you trying to prove an argument of maybe of error that you've been taught in your past. And you'll just take Jesus at what he says. I decided years ago, I'm just going to just take the Lord at what he says. I don't have to defend what was wrong in my life. I don't have to defend the fundamental teachings of what was wrong in my life. There's a lot of things I have learned that some of my background taught me an opposite way. It doesn't mean everything about them was devilish. It didn't mean they didn't love God. But I let the Word of God be the final authority, not the teachings of my group. And anything that way of life teaches that goes contrary to this book, what in the world would you follow it for? But the flip side of that is, is if we are teaching the Word, why in the world are you not following it for? Preaching way better than you're excited. Ignorance. You don't know better for various reasons. Unaware of what you're fighting about. Having arguments but not being empowered. Taught something they don't understand. It's real easy to just kind of glaze over stuff and leave people scratching their head and wondering. And they know there's more there, but you have to leave it alone. Because if you, if you go there, you're going to upset the apple cart of your church. There's a fear, too, there's a, that people are afraid to lose control, personal control. There is an element where the Holy Spirit will take control of our lives, but it's when we yield. But I've been looking at us real close. Can I ask you an honest question? Don't you have some things in your life that you need to lose control of? Because you're driving it in the ground. Don't shout me down. No worry there. Not today, little Johnny. You're driving into the ground. You need someone to take control. And not meth and not alcohol and not immorality. Not the devil. But the Holy Ghost. Because here's the thing. You're going to be filled with something. You're going to be motivated by some power. And the power you need. Is the Holy Spirit. The devil. Satan is the author of confusion. And he's had a plan to divide. To confuse. To defuse. Us. If he can. From the very power. That can stop. Reverse. And extinguish. The Lord's work. In the church. And in the world. He knows. If he can keep us separated from the Holy Spirit. If he can keep us separated from that, then we will live in justifiable lives of comfortable Christianity that doesn't even satisfy us. I believe that's one reason why some people are so uncommitted because what they have is not valuable enough to them. 
But when you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, so many things happen. He removes the quit option. He removes the compromise option. He removes the lazy Christian option. He removes the carnal option. I'm going to sting some of you hard here, but hang with me. He removes the the silly option of, should we go to church today? No, we don't want to go to church today. When you get full of the Holy Spirit, you want to be in God's house. I'm not fussing at you. If you don't want to be here, I know you're not full. I'm really not mad at nobody, but I'm telling you, you, if you're not fired up, you need the Holy Spirit. If if you're not excited about your future and what God says about you, you need the Holy Spirit. Some of you are acting nervous. Why don't you open your heart rather than planning on finding a way to stay the same? Preacher, you're too straight. Oh, I'm not near as straight as I could be. I'm not mad. I just just care about you. I'm just, I'm, I'm so tired of watching precious people miss out on precious privileges because we are content to just think that we can do this by ourselves. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Is Christ Jesus' last name? No. It, is, it represents the anointing of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. We can do all things through the anointing of the Holy Spirit that strengthens us. <laughs> Are you all alive? I know where I need to go in 2019. Y'all concern me a little bit. The devil wants to diffuse things. And if we'll, if we'll give way to the power of the Holy Spirit, Satan's best effort will fail miserably. Then there's the controversy. Here's, the, here's where it gets uncomfortable. That's talk. That tongues thing. But you know that's only a controversy in the United States. Really? I went around the world. Many places, not all, everywhere. But around the world, Presbyterians, Baptists, Methodists, Episcopalians, Lutherans are saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Many of them are baptized in the Holy Spirit when they're baptized in water. Missionaries baptizing new Chinese Christians in water. They go down in water and they come up out of the water speaking in a heavenly language. But in America, we want to argue it and clan up to a group and pull away. We should understand right there. The Holy Spirit didn't teach that. God doesn't. We act like we're the professional Christians of the world. But I'm telling you, God's pouring out His Spirit so gloriously around the earth and we don't need to miss out on the benefit of even things like tongues. And listen, by listening to some of you, you need to do a whole lot more tongue talking anyway. Because you do a lot of talking. But not in a profitable way. Well, brother, I just don't know about that praying tongues. You're absolutely right. But when you give way to him, you will be so grateful. On the day of Pentecost, that's what they did. In Acts Chapter 8, that's what they did. In Acts chapter 9, that's what Saul did on his way to becoming Paul. In Acts chapter 10, that's what they did. In Acts chapter 19, that's what they did. In by 1984, in Pinson, Alabama, with a few believers there with me, I'd come to the place where I was. I, I decided, look, I, I know there's more. I want all that God has for me. And I know that when I received a gift from God, that's not the stopping place. But with a few people around me, they were praying with me. And it was that particular day that the Lord Jesus baptized me in the Holy Spirit, 1984. This is 2018. The Holy Spirit has kept me in the game. The Holy Spirit has been my constant. The Holy Spirit has been my faithful one. The Holy Spirit is the reason why Way of Life Ministries is here. That's the only reason why Way of Life Ministries is here. I would not have even thought about Way of Life Ministries if it had not been for the Holy Spirit. (laughs) 
I have been blessed to see the Lord fill thousands of people, thousands upon thousands, with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. This was something that was so impressioned upon my life as a result of what I saw God do in our family. My mom, who came from a godless life, a godless raising, who was saved and then filled with the Holy Spirit. She had never heard about what that aspect of God. She didn't know anything about God. But she opened her heart, and the Lord filled her with the Holy Spirit, as he told John the Baptist he would do. Shortly after that, my dad, who was raised in a godly home, running from God, living the wrong way, rebelling against God, came to God and was also filled with the Holy Ghost. And my parents, they yielded to a lifestyle that would be produced by the Holy Spirit. They, they showed me that we don't just, we're not just Holy Ghost people on Sundays, but we're Holy Ghost people Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, not because we're trying to be weird and strange, but because we want what Jesus has provided for us to have, and we want to please God. And you know, really, to please God, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. And one of the pleasures of God is not only what God is able to do in you and for you, but what He wants to do through you. Come on, somebody. I... Back to our Christmas get together in Alabama, one of my, one of my nephews, nephew in laws, not the in law, but just for the sake of the identity. Now you know, Jerry. He looked at me and he said, "Years ago, he said you came to Louvern, Alabama." He said, "I was just a teenager, not knowing what I was going to do with my life. I'd recently been born again." He said, but you kept on talking about the baptism in the Holy Ghost. He said, you'd preach on Jesus and you'd preach on the Holy Ghost. And he said, I knew I needed more. And I had seen what the Holy Spirit had done in the life of my mom and dad. He said, but I was trying to figure out how I can do it without the Holy Spirit. It's almost like we're afraid we're going to be labeled. I tell you, I don't think any, any label is worth than being a dead Christian. I mean, why would we be mad and fuss at God when we're not even plugged into the power? Washed in the blood, but unplugged. How many of you not only want the blood, but you want the winds, you want the fire, you want the anointing, you want the oil, you want the rain. All those are symbolic of the Holy Spirit. He said, he said, I, I finally came forward and you, he said, you prayed for me. He said, when you laid your hands on me, he said, I had, I had always been afraid of what to do. He said, you encouraged me to just simply yield. And you explained to me, he said, that yielding is not waiting on God to force you to do something, to make you do something without faith. But it is simply giving place to what God prompts you to do and prompts you to say and how he prompts you to speak or whatever he tells you to do. And he said, when I did... My life has never been the same. He said a confidence came into my life. A help came into my life. This guy was the kind of a person that the enemy would love to have kept bound and limited and exiled away in a little community. And just you just think you're small, boy. But that young man received the call of God into ministry in his life. He went to, to Rama Bible Training Center. God raised him up. He is now a wonderful teacher of the Word of God. But more than that, he's a great father and he's a great husband. He's full of the Holy Spirit. And he said to me, I cannot thank you enough that you talk to me about the Holy Spirit. And when he said that, the Lord said, Son, other people need you to talk about him as, as well. And here's the thing. Anytime I talk about this, I am always met with resistance because people look at you like, you mean to tell me you don't think I, I, I'm doing okay as it is by myself? And that's not even the thought. That's not even the deal. It's that there's more of God. Why do we get defensive when we ought to be getting excited? Why do we resist what we ought to be opening, uh, opening up to? 
I don't mean somebody's tangent. Jesus Christ is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. That's what the Bible says. Jesus Christ is the... This don't come from the devil. You are living on dangerous ground when you say the baptism in the Holy Ghost and tongues and gifts are of the devil. You are saying Jesus Christ is of the devil. That's dangerous ground. This is not of the devil. You were of the devil. The old life was of the devil. Trying to be a Christian in the arm of the flesh pleases the devil. But if you really want to be not of the devil, get full of the Holy Ghost. But you ain't going to get full of the Holy Ghost if you bypass the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Well, I disagree. Well, what are you believing? The Quran or the Bible? Huh? We don't interpret it that way. What does it say? I mean, you, you got to work hard to confuse that. How much more plain can it get? Well, you, you just don't know how I was raised. No, I don't. You don't know how I was raised. But we're not talking about the ghost of Christmas past. We're talking about the ghost of Christmas present and future. The Holy Spirit is ready to elevate your life. Do you want to Do you want to allow your past to be the dominant place that defines what you became? Or are you ready to give way to allow the Holy Spirit to lead your life and navigate your life and direct your life? Woo, some of you, I can tell you ain't prayed in tongues this long. You probably need to respond to this altar call too. Because you're just acting squirmy when you ought to be excited. Some of you, you were raised in classical Pentecost. You were raised in this stuff. And now you act like you're ashamed of it. You know, that's the sad thing. It's because it is culturally incorrect in this hour. We've moved into a time where we can do everything in a free kind of a way across the board, as long as we don't get too crazy with the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to say it again. You are crazy without the Holy Spirit. If you're quenching the Holy Spirit, you are crazy. You're living crazy. It's crazy to have a form of godliness that denies the power thereof. That is crazy. Christmas. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Koshela Marvetia Masa Portia Ashka. In this city, 1987, a young lady gave her life to Jesus. She had fought and ran from God. Didn't want to be around God. Didn't want church. Didn't know why, really. But you know, if you're trying to be lost, you need to stay away from the reality of Jesus. And if you really want to live any way you want to live, you have to push Jesus away. Because if you really get Jesus, you're really going to change. And if you really obey Jesus, you're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. You are. She finally, after weeks... Of lying to her aunt, putting all family members, comes to a revival where a kid preacher's preaching. And she hears the gospel of Jesus Christ. And she comes forward and she's gloriously born again. So born again that she decided, I'm leaving that old life behind. I'm not going back to what I was. It's all but destroyed my life. How many remember when you, get, when you came to the Lord, the stuff you thought you couldn't live without, when you came to the Lord, you realized, my God, it was killing me. It all but destroyed me. I thought I had to have it. I would have just sold Jesus out over it. We criticize Judas for selling Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, but dear God, some of us sold him out for alcohol and drugs and adultery and fornication and homosexuality and gossip and hypocrisy. Just name it. Jesus has been betrayed for a lot of things. But when you come to him, you realize, man, I had no idea. I thought I had to have it. I thought it was my life. I thought I couldn't go on without it. But now I realize Satan had me bound. But Jesus rescued me. I was invited to come into a 
store where she worked. She had some questions about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I walked into that place, and her uncle was in there with her and some family, and they were reading some scriptures about what the Bible says about the baptism in the Holy Spirit because I had announced that Wednesday night I'm going to be preaching on the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the kind of evangelist I was. And people came out and packed out the houses, so not everybody thinks this is bad news. Not everybody acts like they don't need this. Thank you very much. I'll keep on going on my own merry way. So if you're acting that way, not everybody acts that way. But every two nights, two nights back to back, I'd preach a message on how to be saved, the need of being saved, how to come to Christ. And on that third night, and this was for weeks and weeks and weeks, everywhere I went, that third night I'd preach on the baptism in the Holy Ghost because I knew if people were going to really become what God wanted them to become, when they got saved, they needed to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, that's going to be back in that world again. It's not that the blood of Jesus is not enough, but if you stop short, you're, you're, you're denying the help of the power of God. And the thing about it is, if you're going to be a Christ follower, you don't pick what you follow and what you don't. You follow the plan. And so I talked to her about the Holy Spirit, read some scriptures with her. She was growing and learning, barely been saved, maybe 36 hours. All in. Not trying to figure out how can I still go to the clubs and be saved. All right, that's the lifestyle she was in. On her way to becoming an alcoholic. Not trying to figure out how can I still drink and be saved. Don't nobody leave this building right now unless you've got a real bladder issue. If you do, I re you're, you're forgiven. But listen to me. She wasn't trying to figure, I'm a Christian, but I wonder if I can still keep doing meth. I can still keep smoking marijuana. I don't care if they legalize it in every state. The Holy Ghost ain't going to let you off the hook. Because it's got something more for you. It's got something better than you smoking weed. He's got some fire for your life. She, was, she wasn't, listen to me, that's the beauty of being born again. You realize you've been rescued. You realize you've been rescued. And your body, your body at times may scream for something that you don't need anymore. Man, the more we yield to the rescue and power of God, the more we can move forward and not worry about looking back. And I'm telling you, God gives more grace to people who realize how blessed and rescued they've been. How forgiven I am. Look how forgiven I am. <laughs> that night I, I preached on the baptism of the Holy Ghost again. This was about the, the fourth week of this revival. I had preached on the baptism of the Holy Ghost every third service for weeks. And people were getting saved and getting filled saved and getting filled. It was wonderful. Is that all you preach? That's what evangelists are supposed to do. Bible evangelists get people saved and get them filled with the Holy Spirit. Two of the most key things. There are some other things, but two of the most key things. That night I gave the invitation. People began to come. The new converts, they were coming, man. They were coming forward and receiving. And I'm laying hands on people because one of the ways the Lord baptizes people with the Holy Spirit is by the laying on of hands. Some of you never heard this before. And so I'm so glad, I'm glad to talk to you about this. By the laying on of hands. That's not the only way, but that's one of the ways. The laying on of hands is a, is, a, is a powerful thing. It's not to be made light of. I don't just put my hands on everybody, and I don't just want anybody putting their hands on me. It is a sacred thing. It's an important thing. It needs to be something with an intent. And I'm on my way praying from the right to the left. And I look over, and this young lady just, just falls under the power of Almighty God. I ain't nowhere around her. So can't nobody say the big preacher pushed her down. I wasn't anywhere around her. All the YouTube haters, you know. I was nowhere around her. There was nobody, I don't think nobody caught her. All I know is 
I look over there, and she's laid on the floor. And she is praying in a heavenly language as the Holy Spirit gives the utterance. And there ain't no gimmicks going on, no manipulation going on, no mind games going on, no magic powder being sprinkled on nobody. That's crazy. And I understand there may be some crazy folks that offer stuff like that, but you don't need that. That's not what the Word says. And laying there, Jesus gloriously baptized her with the Holy Ghost. And that happens to be your pastor's wife I'm talking about. There is so much. There's so much. So much I can tell. So much I'd love to talk to you about. So much I would love to share with you, but I want to say to you, if I was going to be afraid of anything, I would be afraid to be an end-time preacher, ignoring the need for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But look, I know, I know I'll have to teach order, because I went to a number of Pentecostal churches that they were badly out of order. They did a lot of things that were out of order. They weren't devils. They were just out of order. Let me tell you something else that's out of order. Being dead and dry as last year's bird nest lifeless, thinking about where you're going to go eat and what you're going to do and everything else rather than where your mind and heart ought to be when you're in a setting. That's out of order as well. Order is going to have to be taught, but we can handle that. We can handle that because people who love God can be corrected. We don't want to be inaccurate anyway. Huh? The Holy Spirit is the greatest gift you'll ever receive as a believer. And he'll lead you into more and lead you into more and lead you into more and lead you into more. And you will never get to the place where you got it all. You hear people say that about being born again. Now that you're born again, you got it all. No, no, no. You get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're not going to have it all. He's always got more. There's more, there's more, there's more. I want you to have that more. I want you to experience that more. And Christmas time will be a great time to receive it. Listen to me. You get full of the Holy Ghost. You will become that person in your heart you want to become. That you haven't become yet. You get full of the Holy Ghost. And you're not going to get full of the Holy Ghost without the baptism in the Holy Ghost. The good news is, is there's not enough money in here to buy any. It's already bought and paid for by the blood of the Lamb. All you need to do is ask and believe and receive. That's all you need to do. Brother, this is the, might be the best thing in the world if this is the first time you've heard Maybe I was able to get to you before you got more confused by confused people. Satan uses confused people sometimes, and they don't even mean to, but, it, but he, he'll do anything he can to block people from that fullness. What a gift for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the ghosts of Christmas present, and the ghost Spirit of God that will lead you into a glorious and abundant future. I just I feel so compelled to say some things. The Holy Spirit can save some things in you that without Him you won't even know what to do. The Holy Spirit can help you handle situations that's breaking your heart. I was up in the middle of the night last night. You ever get heavy hearted over things that concern you? How many can relate to me? I was up in the middle of the night last night just praying in the Holy Spirit about some things that I have thought about. I've thought about it. I've thought about it. I've looked at it. I've thought about it. I've, tr- you know, I've, I want to be wise. I want to be. I want to be efficient. I want to do all the things I can do. But I was looking at some stuff that I don't know what to do with it. But the Holy Ghost knows. You got anything in your life that you may not know what to do with? Or am I the only one in here? I believe I got some people who can identify with me. But the Holy Spirit knows. Before I went to sleep last night, 
I said, Lord, forgive me for trying to handle things in my own gifts, in my own abilities, in my own enablement. I, I want to be diligent, and I want to be engaged, and I want to be all those things, but forgive me for trying to handle stuff that is beyond my ability. It's beyond my ableness, but it's not beyond you. And when the Holy Spirit does these things, you ever looked at you ever looked at somebody you love that you care about, and it, it, it seems like they don't want God at all. It seems like they they're not even interested in God. It seems like they're repulsed by God. You ever looked at that? Have you ever looked at yourself? You that love God, and realize there was a time in your life. When you were stiff on in God like crazy. It's like the Lord just reminded me in a fresh way. He said, you, 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 you don't know what all I'm up to. And I don't want you worrying about anything. That's what I heard him say in my spirit. I want you casting all those cares over on me. You know how you love me, son? Yes, Lord. You know how you served me when ain't nobody looking? Yes, Lord. You know how you walked away from everything to follow me? I said, yes, Lord. You know how that nobody's making you do that and you've lived that way for all these years and nobody's made you do what you do? Yes, Lord. He said, I'm the same one that can take care of that situation. And he said to me, you have been fighting this too much in the arm of your flesh. And I said, thank you. Because God, I don't want to miss it. I'd rather God show me where I'm not spiritual so I can be spiritual. Because being spiritual is letting God do the God stuff. And we do whatever level of obedience we need to do, but we allow God to do the God stuff. Would you stand all over the room, please, today? And I love you. I really do. I truly do. We, we have been a church that believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. We will always be a church that believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. We are not some old, crazy, weird Pentecostal church. No, 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 no. But we are Pentecostal in the sense that we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we do not deny that. Nor do we think you're a second-class citizen if you're born again and you've not been. Nor will we ever make you feel like we're holier than you because we've received the gift you've not yet opened your heart to. But we will love you enough to talk about him, to give room to him. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. I want to be, I want to walk in a fullness that you want what I have. I wanna, if I have lost that, I want to get to that again. I want people to want what I have. Not the, oh, I want to be like Chris. No, I want people to, what is that strength you walk in? That, that power, that walk, that encouragement, that consistency, that, how do, you, how do you live that way? It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. Not just because I'm tough. I want to say to you tough people, I'm glad you're tough. But you're going to run out of toughness in some areas. I'm not speaking death over you. I'm glad you're tough. I'm glad I celebrate that. But being calloused is not tough. I want you in this room, if you would, to slip up your hands all over this house. This is where I'm not a real good pastor sometimes. This is where I'm a way better evangelist. Because as a pastor... You gotta so much think about timelines. Evangelists don't worry about nothing like that. They just go with the flow. With hands laid, lifted, thank y'all for being so sweet. Thank you for loving me. I know you love me. I know you love me. You know I love you. And I want to thank you for letting me be me and talking to you like the Lord would use me to talk to you. 
And I want to thank you for letting me just be out there about it. And I, I want to thank you for knowing that when this service is over today, no matter what you choose, you're going to be greatly loved. But it's time for you to experience the more of God. I want you with uplifted hands right now. I want you to say this if you're thirsty. Say, Lord, I open wide my heart for more of the Holy Spirit in my life. Lord, I'm so thirsty for more of you. I hunger for more of you. I desire your power in my life. I am aware that the strength I will have with you is a strength that will show in public the things that you're doing in me privately. And I'm so thankful for that because wonderful Holy Spirit, you're so good about working privately within us and not humiliating or embarrassing but for moving on us and touching us. I yield myself to you. I want to be filled with your power. Let me stop there. For some of you, that means you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit if you're a born-again child of God. If you are a born-again child of God, you're already a candidate to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you're thirsty and you desire this gift, you will and can receive. If you're not yet, you're not going to until you get thirsty. But hey, at least some seeds got put in your heart. Amen. It's worth the seed sowing. I'd love to see everyone receive, but this is worth the seed sowing. If you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, but maybe kind of like me, I felt last night, maybe I've lost my edge a little bit, but I felt the Lord kind of sharpening the edge last night as I began to trust Him over some things that he revealed to me that I had been handling some things that was supposed to be in his hands. Oh, it's so wonderful to give way to him and get along with him and see what he can do. It, mess, it, it, it took half my night last night, but it was way more important than another two or three hours sleep. I can sleep some other time. I'm almost like what I experienced last night. God, I needed it so much. And I, I want you to experience those kinds of moments with uplifted hands, say, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Now, every one of you in this room, you know what you mean by that. Some of you are just wide open, ready for him to do everything he wants to do. Some of you just wanted to get closer. Some of you need a, a refilling of the Holy Spirit. But right there with hands raised, Father, in the name of Jesus, people have asked you around this room to fill them with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I do not know to what degree everyone meant individually, but I do know that any time we ask the Holy Spirit to do something in us is a good thing, that you always want to do more and when you do something, it is a good thing. And so, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as people are standing in this room, I thank you, dear God, that they yield themselves to you as they yielded themselves to you and they said with their own mouth, by choice, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Cleanse me of my sins. Jesus, you are my Savior. Jesus, you're the Son of God. I thank you right now that in this room, some right now are in the process of being baptized with a whole Holy Ghost and fire. Right there, some are just yielding to you. They've asked you to fill them. And right where they are, they're yielding to you and giving place to you as you move on them and overflow in their lives. In the awesome and mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, I hear that. Yes, we will do that. Yes, we will. That's not for me to talk about. I'm sorry, y'all. Just... Just, I just heard something and I appreciate him for telling me that. Yes, we will do that. But Father, right now I give you praise in Jesus' name. I thank you for touching and filling that brother. I thank you for filling my friends. I thank you for filling those, that, that couple, all oh, that needs you so much in this moment. That teenager, that teenager being pulled on in so many different directions. I thank you, dear God, for filling them with your Holy Spirit and power. I thank you, dear Lord God, for what you are doing in their lives. I thank you that you are the ghost of Christmas present and you are the spirit of God that leads us into a brighter future thank you dear God for what's going to happen in families and homes in the next couple of days thank you for some 
some mending that's going to happen, for some healing that's going to happen, for some joy that's going to flow, for some different atmospheres that's going to happen by the work and the help of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, some of you, raise your hands. I'm going to nag some of you. Some of you just live too like a day school for me today. Come on now. I know what time it is, and you got plenty of time to party here in a little bit. But in Jesus' name, Jesus' name, just, just, just stay in His presence. Just hang in His presence a few moments. If your mind's not there, then you don't have to do this. But if, you, if your mind and heart's there, just stay open. Just stay open. Just stay open because this is more important than watching another Christmas movie. And I'm not against them if they're okay. I'm, they're, 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 stay in this moment. God's up to something. God's up to something. It's not my job to fill anybody. It's my job to give people opportunities to receive what the Lord has. I praise you, Lord. I praise you. I praise you. Watching by Facebook Live, be filled with the Holy Spirit. You just give way to Him. Open your heart. Don't be afraid. Minister friend, you love God so much. You're such a gift. Go on and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Broken person who you've gone through a low place, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Person that's been filled but you got distracted, you got hurt, you, you disappointed yourself, and you, you felt lower than a snake's belly. And how can I rise up? The Holy Spirit's been trying to get you to rise up for a long time. Be filled, be refilled, be empowered, and be anointed. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I declare your blessing over everyone in this place. I ask you, dear God, to protect them as they travel. I declare that angels are encamped around about the corners of their vehicles. Some are going out of state. Some are going out of town. Some are going various and different places. But I thank you that we will disperse as your church. But we're going in the power of the Holy Spirit and going in the protection of of Almighty God and His goodness. And I thank you, dear Lord, that what you will do in our lives in upcoming days is going to be glorious. Keep on doing what you started today, Lord. Keep on doing what you've stirred people up about today. Use this service. Use these moments. Use this time for your honor and your glory. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He cause His countenance to shine upon you. May He establish you in all your ways. And may He grant you peace. Merry Christmas, everybody. Love you so much. Merry, 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 Merry Christmas. Hug on some folk. Tell them Merry Christmas. Be sure and let them know how much you love them.